welcome to this special edition of the Philips Intelliview Patient Monitoring Microlearnings. In this video, I will talk about the essentials you need to know when monitoring a patient with a COVID-19 infection using a patient monitor from our Intelliview family. Monitoring starts already when performing a screening and triage of a patient suspected with COVID-19 at the ER and follows the patient in the worst case up to the intensive care. When monitoring a patient with COVID-19, it is inevitable that the monitoring equipment and patient sensors and cables are in direct contact with the patient. Therefore, consider the monitoring equipment in use for your patient as contaminated. As you may know, our Intelliview patient monitors use the touchscreen as primary input device. The touchscreens of our Intelliview patient monitors are designed to work while wearing medical gloves, which is an essential part of your personal protective equipment. To clean the touch-enabled display, disable the touch operation by switching off the monitor during the cleaning procedure or by touching and holding the screen key on the X3 or MX100. Or touch and hold the main screen key on the larger Intelliview monitors. Now a padlock symbol appears on the key. Touch and hold the key again to re-enable the touch operation. If equipment needs to be shared amongst patients, clean and disinfect your monitor, modules, multi-measurement module, measurement extensions, module rack, remote control, cables and accessories between each patient use. After cleaning and disinfection, check the equipment carefully. Do not use it if you see signs of deterioration or damage. When cleaning cables, do not allow liquid to enter the connector or to collect around connector pins. Avoid cleaning or disinfecting while the equipment is in operation or in direct sunlight. Ensure that all parts of the equipment dry completely after cleaning and disinfection. Refer to the Instructions for Use document for a list of disinfectants that have been tested for use on all parts of the monitor exterior and a list for the display and basal. Apply contact precautions as much as possible. Look for using either disposable or dedicated equipment for your patient. Philips has a wide range of disposable accessories, such as ECG cables, blood pressure cuffs, pulse oximeters, capnography lines and temperature sensors. Check our Philips Healthcare Supplies website or contact your local supplier to help you. To clean, disinfect and sterilize reusable transducers, sensors, cables, leads and so forth, refer to the instructions delivered with the accessory. If no instructions are delivered with the accessory, the instructions for cleaning, disinfecting and sterilizing the monitor given in the instructions for use document from the patient monitor are also applicable. If your monitor uses the X3 or X2 measurement modules, you could keep the module, the lead sensors and cables with the COVID-19 patient for the entire hospital stay. This serves two purposes. You can mitigate the risk of cross-contamination via the monitoring equipment and it allows uninterrupted continuous monitoring and patient data collection. There are also ways to avoid touching the monitor inside the patient's room. With the XDS solution, you can operate the monitor remotely from a PC that is outside the patient's room. Or if your unit has a patient information center, IX generation, you can also adjust some settings and alarm limits on the patient information center. Some of our Intelliview patient monitors are equipped with an early warning score application. You can use an early warning score to detect early signs of patient deterioration. To know if your monitor is configured with an early warning score, open the main setup menu, check if you see protocol watch in the menu, and then check if you can enable EWS. Your Intelliview patient monitor may also be equipped with the SSC sepsis protocol in the protocol watch application. 
This application is a screening and guiding treatment tool following the guidelines from the Surviving Sepsis Campaign to monitor your patient for septic shock. You can also enable event surveillance monitoring to trigger a notification and record significant episodes in your patient's condition. Note that the Early Warning Score, the SSC Sepsis Protocol and Event Surveillance are pre-installed features in your IntelliView Patient Monitor, which require optimization to your hospital's policy before you can start using them. Contact your local Philips representative for additional support how to find, set up and use these features in your monitor. When connecting your patient to the monitor, strive for a first-time ride. What I mean is, take the time to connect sensors and cables correctly to your patient. This way you avoid re-entering the room to reconnect a measurement cable or sensor, which will save you time and reduce the risk for contamination. Here are some rules of thumb to start monitoring some basic non-invasive parameters. Make sure you have selected the correct patient profile in your monitor. Profiles are predefined monitor configurations. They let you change the configuration of the whole monitor so you can adapt it to different monitoring situations. To view the profiles in your monitor, select Profiles in the Monitor Info line or select the Profile Smart Key. In a chosen profile, verify the patient category and the paste mode. Adjust if necessary. These settings are important because they determine how some measurements are performed. Now you can start monitoring vital signs. Give extra attention to good skin preparation before applying ECG electrodes. Good electrode to skin contact is important for a good noise free ECG signal as the skin is a poor conductor for electricity. Select the sides with intact skin. Clip or shave hair from sides as necessary. Wash the sides thoroughly with soap and water, leaving no soap residue. We do not recommend using ether or pure alcohol, because this dries the skin and then increases the resistance. And finally, dry the skin thoroughly. Use the ECG electrodes to monitor the respiration rate. The measurement is done either between the right arm and left arm or between the right arm and left limb location. Verify in the respiration setup menu from your monitor which leads is used. To measure the SpO2, select a good extremity and consider different sensor types. The application site should match the sensor size so that the sensor can neither fall off nor apply excessive pressure. Check that the light emitter and photodetector are directly opposite each other. All light from the emitter must pass through the patient's tissue. To measure non-invasive blood pressure, use a proper cuff size and limb position before measuring a blood pressure. When you wrap the cuff snugly around the patient's limb, ensure that the index edge falls within the range indicated by the range arrow. Try to apply the cuff to a limb at the same level of the heart. Set the NBP mode to auto to obtain an automated measurement with a regular time interval. To learn more about monitoring vital signs and other functions in the IntelliView patient monitors, read the instructions for use documentation or talk to your local representative for support. Also know that our monitors come with a two-sided laminated quick guide that covers the bare essentials to get started with monitoring. Our mission to improve lives is more relevant now than ever. At Philips, we are working vigilantly to support with clinical guidance relating to the use of our professional healthcare products and solutions and any other information that may be helpful during this crisis. Our gratitude goes out to everyone who is fighting against COVID-19 and who are trying to do what they can to help patients. Stay safe and healthy.